Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, we're going to go over how to make your webcam look even better on your videos and live streams in just, I don't know how long, preferably under 20 minutes. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Jake, otherwise known as The Formal Pickle. I have a bachelor's degree in film production, and while getting that degree in film production and working on many different movies, TV shows, music videos, so on and so forth, I focused very heavily on cinematography. I've also been making videos and live streaming online for the last nine years, and these are some of the tips and tricks that I have acquired over the last nine years of practice. Before we get into any of this, the very first thing I want to acknowledge and cover is, yes, of course, equipment matters. The more expensive stuff is going to look better, but only if you know what you're doing. You can make a $40 webcam look pretty decent, but under the same circumstances, under the same lighting, a $2,000 camera is always going to look better. But even with that in mind, you should start with the $40 webcam and work your way up to the, to the $2,000 or whatever it may be dollar camera to use as your webcam. That way you understand the fundamentals and the philosophy behind camera placement, lighting, and everything else that goes into setting up the shot. In this video, the three main categories that we are going to touch on are one, camera placement and settings, two, lighting, and three, set dressing or background decor. First, let's talk about camera placement. The very first thing you need to know is to keep that camera as close to eye level as possible. If you get the camera above your eye level significantly, the audience is going to feel larger than you, you are going to feel insignificant, and then you are not going to feel like you are in charge or important in the stream or video. Placing the camera too low also makes the audience feel insignificant and it makes you feel larger than the audience. And you don't want that. You want to be equal with your audience. This is all about building a community and having conversation and making friends in many cases. You want them to feel comfortable with you. You don't want them to feel uneasy or anything like that. So get that camera eye level. I cannot stress that enough. No one wants to look up your nose while you're recording a video. No one. Another important aspect of camera placement, which doesn't sound like it falls in camera placement, but trust me, it does, eye contact. If the camera's not placed in such a way where you can make decent eye contact with the lens, aka with your viewers, then they are not going to connect with you as strongly or quickly. Eye contact is one of the most important things about having that camera, making sure that the glare is minimal on your glasses if you wear them. If I look this way, the, w the glare is going to increase because I'm looking towards my light. If I look back this way, it should decrease to a degree and you should be able to see my eyes giving us a stronger ability to connect with one another. Another thing that kind of goes in line with that is placing your camera similar to where you would read your chat. Now this is more so if you're live streaming, but if you're live streaming and you're reading chat, but your chat is right over here, and you look over here every single time you're reading their messages, but you're having a conversation with them, you're not looking at them and they're going to feel disconnected because you're looking over here. It feels like you're talking to someone else. So try and place that camera where you would read your chat. That way it looks like you're speaking roughly in their direction when you're looking at your screen and you're reading chat. They're gonna be able to tell you're reading the chat, but it's gonna feel a lot more normal and it's gonna be easier for you to bounce back and forth from chat to the camera. You also want to avoid the straight on look. We're almost straight on right now, which is not ideal, but I'm kind of limited with my background. We'll talk about that later. However, it did give us the opportunity to kind of set up that rule of third just, just a little bit. We're a little shy. We probably should be over here just a little bit more to get that rule of third. Uh, we could center frame. You could still do that, but ideally you want to move that camera 45 degrees from your face so you're on the shadow side when you're lighting it. So you got to think about where you're going to be placing your lights. We'll talk about that later. But you want your camera to be on the shadow side, not the hot side. So they're, you're catching just the fill layer and you're getting some nice shadows going across your face. Set the camera 45 degree angle off from you. And that is going to be the best you can get. You can probably go down to 35 degree and still get away with it. This is not ideal, but this is what I'm limited to with my space. And that's another thing. Work with the space you're given. A tip that I wasn't even going to bring up, but I will now. Don't put your desk against the wall. Have that desk out from the wall a little bit if you can. I'm in a very tiny room, 
And I want that background to be as far from me as possible so I can get a bit of a depth of field effect on it. So I do have my desk all the way up against the wall. It makes things a little inconvenient for me. I can't place lights there as easily. I had to spend a little extra money. In fact, we'll, uh, we'll do a whole other video on that. You also want to be mindful of your background. Make sure that you are the focus of the frame. You don't want something that is overly bright in your frame along with you. You don't want something that is very detailed in the frame that is right up front and center as well because it's going to take focus off of you and you are the focus of the video or stream. Like, for example, there's a fan right back here that I actually should move right now because it is a little too detailed. You can see it too clearly and it does draw your focus away a little bit. Another example is being aware of your surroundings. Immediately right here, I'm touching an AC unit in the window. You guys would be looking at that constantly if it was in the frame and it would be annoying and it would be distracting. So it's chopped out of the frame. And then right over here on this side, well, actually, here's the softbox. I'm touching it. Okay, so there's the light. But right over here is my bed and my door. And we don't want you to see that either. So that's why I'm limited on putting the camera almost near straight on, even though I said I wouldn't recommend doing that. However, it does get a nice view of the face, so it's not really the biggest rule. I would just, you know, usually you want to go about 35 to 40. We already talked about it. You get it. But if you can't fit that one in, it's fine. I should say, always make sure you're, you're in a place where your camera can acquire power and get connected to the PC. If you place your camera somewhere where you can't connect it to the PC or power it, um, that placement isn't going to work and you're going to need to find a new way or you're going to need to get some extra cables or something. So keep that in mind. I don't know how many of you were going to make that mistake, but I figured I would warn you just in case. I've been there. I've done that. It's not fun to set everything up and realize it's not going to work. Now let's talk about camera settings. So camera settings can get a little bit complicated. We're going to try and make this as basic as possible. If you're using a webcam, then you have limited settings. Most of the time you'll have an exposure slider, an autofocus slider, and a white balance slider. And that is almost everything that you need to mess with. We're going to run through them in that order. First is exposure. Pretty simple. It is how bright or how dark your scene is. If you are boosting the exposure, then on a webcam, you are essentially boosting the ISO equivalent on a uh, DSLR camera. You're boosting the ISO or the digital gain on that camera to make it brighter. If you push it too far, if you're in a very dark room, you don't have proper lighting, it is going to get very grainy, a lot of digital noise. So keep that in mind. If you have it too low, your image overall is going to be underlit or underexposed and things are going to be darker than they should. So you want to expose for your subject, expose for the highlights of your skin, the low end of your skin as well. You don't want this to fall off to absolute black. You don't want this to be pure white and overexposed, underexposed. You want to try and get a balance between the two, which can be a little difficult depending on how you have everything set up. Adding some practical lights in the back is a good way to spice it up, add some color, get some light back there. If you are using a single source light like this, or even if you're using a, a three light setup, we're going to get in lighting a little bit later, but just keep that in mind with your exposure. It all depends on how much light you have available and how sensitive the camera you are using is. Now we're going to go over autofocus. Pretty simple, or the focus, we're, we're going to probably not call it autofocus, for, but just your focus, okay? Now it's probably going to be set to autofocus by default, which normally could probably be fine, but if you're in low light conditions or if the webcam needs significantly more light or something like that, or it can't find your face, you might find the webcam or your camera hunting. Hunting is when things go in and out of focus. It is trying to find what it needs to focus on. So I would recommend taking it out of autofocus and adjusting your slider on your webcam or equivalent on your camera to get your eyes in focus. You might be playing with it and see that your face is in focus, but you need to be very careful and pay attention to make sure your eyes are in focus. That is what is important. That is what must be in focus. So adjust your slider or equivalent on your camera accordingly to get your eyes in focus. And finally, we have white balance. White balance can get really complicated really fast. There are a lot of creative ways you can tweak and adjust your white balance to get specific looks that you're looking for. But simply put, you either have tungsten 
or daylight balanced lights. Tungsten or daylight balanced, okay? So right now I'm using a daylight balanced light. It is a cool light in a sense where if you were balanced for tungsten, it would appear blue. In other words, if you're balanced at 3200 Kelvin, which is tungsten, it would appear blue because it's a daylight balanced light at 5600 Kelvin. So adjust your slider or your white balance accordingly to the correct setting to make sure the balance is white and not blue. If you are using tungsten lights, then make sure you are set to a tungsten balance of 3200 Kelvin or roughly around there. If you are not balanced to 3200 Kelvin with tungsten lights, the image will appear slightly yellow or orange in color. So balance your camera according to what lights you are using. If you're using a mixture of lights, you have a daylight balance light, you have a tungsten balance light over here, then you can actually create an interesting color combination. You must choose which one you want to appear in color. Usually I would go with balancing for the daylight light, which is what I have right here at 5600 Kelvin, and then letting the tungsten light fill the shadow side at that warmer tungsten or 3200 Kelvin color temperature. We're going to get into lighting later. It gets really complicated. There's a lot of things you can do. White balance, simply make sure you are either on daylight or tungsten, depending on what you're using for your lights. Now we have a couple extra things if you're using an actual camera for your webcam that we need to focus on. First is your frame size. We need to focus on what do you shoot on? Do you shoot tight? Do you shoot with a say 85 millimeter, which is a very tight in shot, or do you shoot with a wider say 24 millimeter lens? These are decisions that you need to make. I'm shooting right now at about 36 millimeter. So you need to decide, do you go wide or do you go narrow? The bigger the number, the more narrow your frame, the wider the number or the lower your number, the wider your frame. That's the simplest way to put it. You also need to keep in mind your aperture. Your aperture is the little ring in your lens on how closed or open it is. If it's very closed, it is not letting in as much light. And focus is going to be much broader. You're going to have longer focus. More is going to be in focus when you have a closed aperture. A closed aperture would be a larger number. F22, for example, is the max many lenses will go to. Then if you want a shallower focus to where the background is blurred a bit, then you would lower your aperture number so the ring or the iris is wider. And this would allow more light in as well as creating a kind of blur effect or depth of field on your background. Keep in mind, the wider your iris, the more light you're letting in, so you'll need to adjust your exposure and your ISO accordingly. If you shoot with a very closed aperture, say f22, in a dark lit room like this, you will need either a lot of light, or you will not see anything, or you'll need to bump your gain so high that it's going to look terrible. So I would suggest lowering your aperture as much as it can go if you're shooting in a low light situation, and then you'll get a nice depth of field in the background, you will be properly lit and you can keep your shutter speed at an appropriate setting to your frame rate. Frame rate or FPS is how many pictures per second it takes when making a video. You want to match this to your stream output. I stream in 30 FPS, 720p. So my camera right now is actually set up on 4K, but 30 FPS. That way my frame rate matches my shutter speed needs to be double my frame rate. Therefore, I'm shooting at a 1 60th shutter speed. This is to keep the motion blur as realistic as possible. This is the true filmic look that you'll get the motion blur when I move my hand. If I had it set wrong, it would look off and it wouldn't look quite right. So make sure your, su your shutter speed is set to double your frame rate and set your frame rate on your camera as close as you can get to the output of your stream. All right, that's pretty much everything to go through on your camera settings. If you have any further questions, as I know many professional cameras or DSLR cameras can get much more in depth and much more complex, then ask me in the comments down below. Now we are gonna get into lighting and how to properly set up your lighting 
we're going to go through a one light and two light and three light setup, all with having practicals in the background. Currently, I'm only going to show you a one light setup, but I will do more videos in the future on different lighting options. Before we get into the rest of the topics, this video is brought to you by InsightStudios.org. That's InsightStudios.org. If you are looking for an editor or if you're looking for marketing, brand consultation, SEO assistance, thumbnail assistance, or whatever it may be, go to InsightStudios.org. That's InsightStudios.org. Use discount code PICKLE to get a percent off of your first one-time service. And make sure when you're looking for a video editor or any of your buddies are looking for a video editor, go to InsightStudios.org. Org. They have the insight and the knowledge to make your videos even better than they were before. Myself and my editor greatly appreciate it. It's because of people like you that we get to eat. So, thank you. <laughs> All right, back into the topics. So, the first thing we need to figure out is what sort of lighting do you have available to you? Do you just have a desk lamp? Do you have a softbox light kit? Do you have some LED panels? What do you have that you can use at your disposal? Now, you also want to keep in mind what white balance you're shooting for. This is where camera settings also play into this. You want to make sure you are recording in the white balance that most of your lights are in. Now, it's okay to not have your white balance set to what all of your lights are. You can have like two tungsten lights and then one daylight or vice versa. You can use that to your advantage when creating kind of an, an accent piece to your lighting in, in, in a sense. But the first thing we need to get into are the basics of lighting. We're going to first talk about a one light setup, and then we're going to move into three lights, okay? So the first one would be a one light setup. That is what we're running right now. I have one light source lighting my face. It is almost at a 90 degree angle, which is not ideal. You would want to put that light. I just hit it over at about a 45 degree angle from between the camera and your face. That's going to create a nice, nice shadow effect going across your face on the shadow side. And it's going to kind of give you the start of a Rembrandt light, which is where you get a triangle underneath, underneath your subject's eye on the shadow side. So get that light 45 degrees if possible. It's not possible right now, so it's near 90 degrees from me, shining across my face. I'm making sure that the softbox is flagged off from the background so it does not spill onto the background and take away any of the color that I have back there with RGB lights. It is lighting exclusively me. Now there is one thing I would like to note right here. Do you see this? Do you see this? kind of haloing effect going on right here. I'm trying to figure out how to outline it. You see this kind of haloing effect over here. It's a little brighter. It kind of seems fuzzier in a way. If, if it maybe it seems a little dustier, it's, it's a halo effect. That is a lens flare. And the reason that's happening is because the light is actually hitting the lens. The light is actually hitting the lens. Now I have a lens hood on my lens, but it's not large enough to block out this light. The light is still far enough this way and angled enough this way towards you that it's hitting the lens and it's causing a lens flare. So I should flag off that from the camera to, uh, to a degree at least and get rid of that halo effect. It's something that I should keep in mind. So keep that in mind. If you are doing a one light setup, it's not the end of the world. You might even like it. You might think it's a little stylized. You get a little bit of a, of kind of a, uh, dancing, uh, what are they called? The dancing dogs or uh, the light rays, the god rays. You get a little bit of that going on. So maybe you like it. Maybe that's what you want. But the fundamentals of lighting is the same. No matter how many lights you have, it just gets more complex the more you add. But it gets more complex the more you add, but it gets it's more difficult to do it well with one light. So right now we have the shadow side of my face right over here. This is the side of my face that is receiving less light. This is the highlight. This is the shadow side. It makes the image more pleasing when you have the camera on the shadow side. The, the, the brights just aren't as obnoxious. If you look, these brights are pretty obnoxious. Now, if I look this way, I'm going to look directly into the light, and you're not really going to see the difference that I'm talking about. Put your camera on the shadow side. We talked about that earlier. And having it go across your face, preferably at a 45-degree angle, from right out here instead of right immediately over here, and you'll get that shadow side on this side of your face. 
Now, what if this side of your face is a little bit too dark? What you can do is have another light if you have another light available. If you do not, you can use a bounce. You can bounce the light from your light source on this side back at your face to get a small fill on your face. Right over here, I have white walls. These white walls are bouncing the light back off the wall into my face, filling in the shadow side a little bit more. If I did not want this, and I wanted my shadow side to be even darker, then I could hang something black right here, a black curtain of any kind, a black fabric, whatever it may be, and it'll darken this side of your face. Or you can hang a bounce or use the white walls, whatever it may be, and it'll brighten the shadow side of your face. It'll That's the fill layer. So you have your key light, which is the main light lighting your scene. You have the fill light, which is filling the other side of your face. And then there's a third light we can get into, the kicker light. It literally just defines you from your background. So what's my kicker light right now? It's actually the RGBs. The RGBs are acting as my kicker light right now. So they're kind of multi-purpose. I have them shining the, the background to get some color in the back. And they're actually spilling onto me. You can see it. You can see it best right here. You can see it on the microphone. That's my kicker. This side of the face, you can see it gets some color from the lighting. And that's kind of how you can tell it's a kicker. It's actually probably a little bit too far to the side. The B1, it's almost acting as a fill. It's rough. If I really wanted this to be a better kicker, I would uh, I would get something to actually define my chair a little better and my head primarily from the background a little bit more. Now, you don't want it to be overbearing, but you want it to be able to separate you from your background. So that gigantic cluster is essentially your one light, two light, three light setup. It's all the same whether you have one light or three lights. It just gets more complicated and you get more opportunity to dial in that look that you're looking for. This right now is technically one light. You could push it as being two lights with the background RGBs and you could push it with being three lights if you counted the wall as a bounce, even though it's not technically a light. So this is in theory a three light setup, but with one light. It gets complicated. If you have any questions about lighting, then let me know in the comments down below. This is what I know the best out of everything we've talked about here today. Lighting is my specialty. So if you have any questions on it, let me know in the comments down below. Now we're gonna get into set dressing the background. And this first point is going to kind of spill in between lighting and set dressing. It's using practical lights to fill the background with color, but leaving the background dark enough to where you can define yourself and the background kind of falls off a little bit, but not so dark that it's just an empty void. You know, you have some detail back there. So what you want to do is you want to have stuff in the background of your image that are relative to your channel or they are interesting to look at, but not too detailed. You don't want them to be really, really bright because then it's gonna, it's gonna distract people from you, from who's important, right? So as you can see here, we've got a couple movie posters. Now these movie posters are important to me if you know me as a person, because I'm trying to build a personality brand, um, not just a content brand, but personality level. Uh, I, I've put things in here that define me as a person. So the movie posters are very important because I have a bachelor's degree in film production, like I mentioned earlier. I love movies way, way too much. And these are just a couple of the movie posters that I own. The guitar right there, that is because I love music. I'm listening to it at practically all times of the day. Alternative rock primarily is my go-to, by the way. I cannot play that thing, by the way, and it's missing like two or three strings. So there's that. Now we've got uh, the pickle right here. This is a six foot inflatable pickle. The formal pickle is my channel. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Also, just while we're talking about it, just for the fun of things, what's up? So then we got a cowboy hat because I, uh, I've actually grew up on a farm. A lot of my content is farming related and uh, I've actually gone to a lot of rodeos and barrel racings and things like that. So that is a legitimate cow cowboy hat of mine. It's one I actually wear and own. Right here is uh, part of my college outfit or whatever you would say. My diploma is actually right above it, but I have that cut off. 
Uh, so right here is my college kind of diploma section is up there. There's also a camera up there. And then we got the Xbox because I do gaming. We have a Logitech wheel because of gaming. There's actually a PS4 right underneath that cowboy hat with the iHeart Road sticker because I didn't know where to stick it. I love stickers, but I never want to stick them anywhere because I feel like I'll regret that I stuck it there and then I'll never be able to stick it anywhere else. Maybe that's commitment issues. I don't know. <laughs> but you get the idea. You want to build up your background to be related to your content, to you as a person, depending on what you are shooting for as a content creator. If you're shooting to be a personality brand, then make it more towards your personality. If it's more about content, it's more about the specific videos or stuff, or, or if it's more about, you know, tech tips or whatever it may be, and it's not personality-based, then maybe shoot for things related to whatever it is you're reviewing or you're, you're doing tutorials on, whatever it may be. Okay, I know the last bit of this video was unorganized, unplanned, and I rambled, but honestly, lighting can be so complicated that I didn't want to just script it out, and I, I tried to explain it the simplest I could. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below about any of this. If you want to see more videos on how to improve your videos or your streams, let me know in the comments down below. One of the tips I would give you is um actually write a script for some things and uh, maybe do more than one take, unlike I am right now. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. My name is The Formal Pickle. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you give it a big old thumbs up. If you want more, click that subscribe button. Let me know what you want to see next time. Also, a couple new desk lights we're going to be reviewing. I'm going to unbox those and review them literally right now. So uh, check out that video if it's in the queue. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I'll see you all later. <laughs>